Hi peeps, welcome back to another video. Today's video is going to be on Inktober, particularly day one, which is poisonous. Now, if you don't know what Inktober is, I will put in the comments below all the links that you need to go and find out. But basically it's drawing an ink drawing every single day throughout October. I did manage to record pretty much every single drawing I did, which means that I can now offer them as tutorials with a voiceover. So without further ado, this is day one, Poisonous, after this short intro. Just a quick list of all of the materials that I'm using. Paper-wise, I'm using Cass Arts watercolour paper. And for the inks, I'm using Dr. PH Martin's Bombay Indian inks. I will put a full list of all of the materials I used down in the description. So in case you're wondering what I'm drawing, I'm drawing the sixth most poisonous animal on the planet, which is a poison dart frog. I thought it would lend itself to go with inks very nicely as it's pretty brightly coloured anyway. The colours I've started out with are blue, turquoise and pink. These colours of course go together very well. And I'm using a very light and very watery mix just to lay out some of the basic shapes on the frog. You can see me working from left to right and that is to give one part of the drawing the opportunity to dry while I work on the other side. Now most of what you can see me doing here is a lot of blending with water. I don't want any hard edges here, other than the very outer edges of the frog. So you can see me dropping in colour and then blending it out with water in order to give that softness to the edge of each shape and also to blend into the other colours. I'm also using the two different colours to separate out the lights from the darks in this piece. So you can see where I've put some of those purpley pinky colours at the bottom of the frog and his back legs and at the bottom of his arms. This is to map out the shadows and where they sit. You'll also see me on odd occasions dabbing the paper with a paper towel. This really is to mop up some of the liquid. I found that because the inks dried quite quickly and I wanted the inks to blend in with each other, I had to put a lot of water down and sometimes I had to mop this up as I went. You can see me now working on a second layer, really deepening some of those colours. And I'm swapping between the aqua blue and the turquoise blue, blue and the pink. So this would be a good time to talk about the difference between inks and watercolour. On the surface they seem pretty similar, but watercolours dry slower and they go on slightly easier. I think they blend more into water, whereas inks definitely have a very, very quick drying time. I also find that I have to work them into the water a little bit more than watercolours. Inks like watercolour do fade as they dry, but I don't think that they fade quite as much as watercolour, so you have to be a little bit more mindful of your washes. So as you can see, I'm still working on layers here. I am really starting to put those shadows in now and those much stronger mixes. In my palette, I have a watered down version of the colour. I put that onto the paper and then I'm dropping pure ink into that. This ensures that I get a nice strong wash without it being pure pigment. Sometimes the fact that the ink dried quicker really was an advantage, especially doing these later layers, as I was able to move on a lot quicker than I would be if I was using watercolour. One of the reasons for doing lots of layers is really to keep in check your lights, darks and lid tones. It goes in a bit of a loop really. So you put your darks down and they show up your light. You then darken your light and that shows up your darks. So by swapping between your darks, your lights and your mid tones in this way, you can gradually build them up and ensure that you've got them right. 
it's a good way to make sure that your darks are dark enough and your lights are light enough. So you can see me here darkening some of those darks and just going back and forth between that and my mid-tones just to ensure that I'm adding the depth where I want to add it. And I'm also mixing some of my colours up and ensuring that I get a good range of colour. I'm still working with soft edges with one colour bleeding into the next and also creating that nice layered effect that you only get really with watercolour. And here we have another similarity. The inks are lovely and transparent so when you layer on top of each other the lower layers still show through. And here we have a complete difference between ink and watercolour with regards to permanence. Often when you lay a new colour on top of watercolour, you sometimes can lift the pigment up underneath and it can mix in with your current layer. With inks, there is no way that is going to happen. Once the ink dries, it is permanent. It does not come up whatsoever once you put a new layer on. Now, depending on the look that you want, this can either be a a great advantage or a disadvantage. I'm just starting to put in some of the final dark layers here and I'm also putting a little bit of detail in that eye. When it came to doing the spots I wasn't quite sure how to approach it initially. I started off with an initial layer of water and then I dropped some ink in and hoped that it would retain a little bit of form. Unfortunately this didn't happen, it was very blotchy so after a couple of tries, I gave it a bit of a dab with some paper towel and decided to take a different approach. As I have done before, I dropped some water down first and then I put some pure pigment down and this seemed to work a lot better. I used this same technique right across the whole of the body for all of the spots. I also used the same blue throughout. I just used a bit of tissue where I needed to lighten them just to lift a little bit of colour. There really was a lot of spots here, so I have speeded this video up a little bit faster than the rest of the video, just to get through them all. I worked pretty loosely with the reference photo at this point. I just randomised some of the spots, roughly looking at the ratio between the larger spots and the smaller ones, and noticing where the biggest spots were on the body. It's always a good skill to learn on when to follow the reference photo exactly and when not to. This kind of thing can take up a lot of your time, ensuring that you copy it exactly right where each spot is and what it looks like. This really isn't necessary as long as you have got the form and the shape, you can follow your own patterns and do the job a lot quicker. This can also apply when you're drawing fur, where the rough shape of the fur and the direction of the fur is all you need, rather than getting every single strand of fur in place. It's also sometimes good to consider leaving things out or putting things in, deciding what translates well to a drawing and what doesn't. I think these are skills that you pick up along the way as an artist rather than learn it through a video or somebody demonstrating it. You just develop a bit of an eye for composition. Well, other than going a bit spot crazy with this piece, I really enjoyed it. I wasn't quite finished at this point and thought it needed just something a little bit extra. So I did decide to do a background. I was a little bit nervous because I didn't know how it was going to turn out really. Due to the inks drying out so fast and also I did have a couple of problems with blending the ink into water. But I needn't have worried because it all turned out okay. And the decision to do a background was a really good one. It really made the frog shine and stand out. So I was really pleased with it in the end. I think sometimes when you're using a new medium, it's really good to experiment. And the good thing about Inktober, you know, you're not doing it for a commission or anything like that. It's just a bit of fun. So when you're experimenting and it goes wrong, it's not the end of the world. But I am very pleased it turned out okay. 
So this is day one of Inktober all done and I was really keen to get the next one going and at this stage I was pretty hopeful that I would make it through the whole 31 days. As a final touch I just went over the whole thing with a light wash of white ink just to bring out those highlights and there was a particular sheen across his belly so I just got that in as well. I do hope you enjoyed this video and the first instalment of Inktober 2018. There are certainly lots of videos to come yet, so if you want to be notified, hit that subscribe button and hopefully you'll get to catch my next video. Don't forget, I also have a Patreon channel so that you can learn how to draw and paint alongside me and all the videos are in HD and in real time. You won't just be supporting me as an artist, you'll also be supporting my favourite charities through the proceeds of every art piece that I sell as a result of Patreon. I'll pop all the links below and thanks for watching again. I shall catch you on the next video. Take care. Hi peeps, thanks for joining me on this latest video. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, come and join me on Facebook. And if you want to learn more and see some real-time tutorials on how to draw and paint, then pop along to my Patreon page and come along and learn with me. I'll put all the links below and hopefully I'll see you again soon.